that also. Um, so, quirky by might means that you feel like everything is entirely up to you, and that it is absolutely on your shoulders, and that you have to force it into place, and you have to make it happen. And so as a result, the word driven takes on a different meaning. The word driven takes on a meaning of that you're driven by the source of yourself. That's pure discipline and pure willpower. And at some point in time, if that's the case, that will give out and you will give out because you will become exhausted. There's only so much energy and strength that you have internally on your own. Why? It's because it's not just your plan. It is his plan. And when you're in his plan, then as a result of that, um, it makes your path straight. The streams in the desert and the pathways in the wilderness is what he carves out for us. So it's that the benefit is not only the peacefulness, but to know that it's already been foretold and your life has already been a success. Your life has already been a victory because as I said the other day, you were birthed for leading, living, having a victorious life. That was the intention of your existence. And it is utterly immersed in your DNA, that very thing. When I became a Christian, there was a storyline that went with it that I'm not going to share this morning for the sake of time, but um, one of the women that had been praying for me, let me just grab me a glass of water, and just thank you, Sydney. Um, of all the women that had been praying for me, was one of my closest, dearest, bestest friends in the entire world. Um, that is a lifetime bestest friend. Um, and when I had the connections through my business of the little journey that I took, where God revealed himself to me and, and I asked him to come into my heart, um, I came right home and she's the first person that I told. And she was waiting for it. She was waiting for it. You know, when you pray for something for someone, you have to have the expectation to know that God is going to deliver. And when you know that God is going to deliver, you're waiting to hear the good news of the answer of what it is he's delivering to you. And so when I sat in my Joyce Berger in my car, in my Cadillac, she and I were sitting in the she was in the passenger side, and I was like, guess what? The coolest thing just happened to me this weekend. Like, I thought she was going to be surprised by the whole thing. Like, really? I mean, she was like, hallelujah, Jesus. I like, had her hands up in the air. And so I was standing back like, what do you mean, hallelujah, Jesus? She was like, we've been praying, we've been praying. Um, so she drove me right to the Christian bookstore. She bought me this life. Joyce, will you stand up, please? scratched in, has all the highlighted and all the notes and everything all over it. Um, and she taught me how to pray because I really didn't know how to pray. And I didn't know how significant it was that you needed to pray on a daily basis. So I sent this to, to the directors at the beginning of the month because um, it came to me via a YouTube video of a gentleman who wrote this in a chapter of his book on prayer. So I'm going to share with you the power of prayer because... What you saw on the stage on Friday night with Tammy and her son Eric and Krista was because of the power of prayer. Because Tammy prays every single morning. And she has her devotional that she does every single morning. And, you know, I know that that's not a simple thing. That becomes a habit. The deal is that you might not be able to change a habit instantaneously, but we can change a behavior instantaneously. 
And when you change a behavior, and then you're committed to the behavior on a daily basis, then it will become a habit, and you wouldn't consider doing it because it's just a part of how you live your life, just like brushing your teeth in the morning. Um, but sometimes we don't understand the power of it. The power of it is that we don't always see the evidence of what it is that we want initially, but because the prayer continues, and the prayer is consistent, then you will see it. So we sometimes have to lean not on our own understanding, but we know that he is created in the background. There's power to seeing it before it exists. There's a power of creating your own reality. It's called visualization. But visualization is truly how God creates the pictures in technicolor so that we can actually live in the picture before the picture happens. How many of you have done it before? Yes? How many of you know that putting yourself in the feeling like it already is? So example, right now, all the consultants in the room, you've just become directors. You've just became directors as of this morning. This morning. Brand new sales director. Okay, I want you to stand up and show me your faces. Like, what does it feel that you just became? That's the dream. Brand new sales director. Okay, I'm going to bring you up here. Okay, I want you to say it. Guess what? Guess what? I am a brand new sales director.
through his people. We have been given the great authority of prayer. Heaven listens when we pray. We've been created in the image of God to have fellowship with him. Therefore, there's a deep longing within each and every one of us to be close to him. Prayer is not a means to getting everything that we want. Prayer is, <laughs> prayer is what we want. Because he reveals to us through our prayer what the desire of our heart is. What the desire of our heart is. I thought I wanted to teach skincare classes to make money so that I could pay off our debt and our bills. And that's exactly the intention as to why I came into the company, except for that longing in my heart that made sense when she said that Mary Kay didn't believe in constructive, constructive criticism. Um, so that was my intention to the efforts. Did I not know that I was going to love the process so much because of the women who were sitting in front of me? I hadn't thought about the women sitting in front of me, and I thought about how can I sell this product. I need women to sell the product. I didn't look at, I can use this product to save women. So through prayer, God showed me, I need to use this product to save women. I need to use this opportunity to change their lives, to give women an opportunity to rise above their circumstances, <coughs> and not just knowing that they can, giving them the tools to do so. That's a huge difference. I have two good friends of mine who are pastor's wives, very good friends. And we get together for coffee and breakfast and all kinds of different times and share, you know, just share friendship. Um, and one day they call me, they went, Stacy, we need to get together with you right now. It's Nancy Pancrats and Dina. Dina's name has changed three times ago. Um, <laughs> and for, and for good, anyway. It's, it's, a story, it's a good idea. So, um, and um, they called me and said, now, like now, like, can you meet us today? And I was like, yeah, I can meet you today. So I met up for coffee. They're both waiting for me. I was like, am I walking into an intersection? What is that? So I sit down in front of them. I was like, yeah, what's, what's going on? And they're like, okay, here's, this is what we figured out. This is what we figured out. We figured out that all three of us do the very same thing. We teach and we preach and we love and we give. But you do something in addition to what we do, and that's why we get frustrated. We don't have what you have. You have the tools to put in the hands of the woman, and you teach her how to fish. You just don't tell her how to fish. You teach her how to fish. That's why God caused Mary Kay to create this company, so that she could teach women how to change their lives, and she could put women in their feet. You know, like, uh, um, and we're like the chipmunks. We go, after you, no, after you, no, after you, no, after you. <laughs> I've never seen this before in my life. Um, so, uh, so, it is a different kind of atmosphere, as we know. So the scripture that I want to share with you this morning was a scripture that I actually, I got lost in Omaha, Nebraska, which is really rare of me to do because I grew up in Omaha. And I was trying to find a specific store. I had Eli with me in the back seat and I was driving around um, and turning around in neighborhoods. Have you ever like turned around in neighborhoods, trying to find your way out of a neighborhood, then you got into a neighborhood. Um, and so, uh, so I pulled up in front of this church and there was this quote printed on the sign of the church. And the quote said, 19, it should have the right one. Here I, I call heaven and earth to witness for you today. And I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So I want you to choose life in order that you may live and in the order that your descendants may live. Now the context of life or death is that it's not life, death. It's a life of life or a life of death. You're living with a lot of dead stuff. The stuff that does not cause you to get excited or wake up in the morning full of joy, but the things that can weigh you down. The guilt, the worry, the anxiety, the frustrations, the fear, of the things that you don't believe that really will happen. Those are the death things. 
The life things are the joy and the excitement and the exhilaration and the celebration. Those are the things of life. But as you live, so your descendants shall live. So we've talked a lot about the impact of generations this weekend and on our children this weekend. So I'm gonna share with you a story about my mom and that's gonna be the conclusion of the rest of my talk this morning. Um, when I became a Christian, um, one of the very first people I shared it with was my mom. Because, um, because as I said, I didn't grow up in a family of prayer. So I took her to lunch and I told her all about Jesus and she was totally irritated. <laughs> totally irritated. Totally frustrated that I was even having this conversation with her. Um, and she called me a little Jesus freak. <laughs> no. My mom, I have to describe my mom. My mom is a thinker, D, personality. And I am a feeler, I, personality. And so my life, I grew up with my mother hurting my feelings constantly. <laughs> somewhat prepared for this lunch, but I kind of just walked away thinking, well, I laid the foundation, and this is who I am now, so she needs to be aware of why I'm like so on fire about this. Um, now, when, um, <laughs> um, when I got into Mary Kay, um, my mom was the one person who I wanted to be excited for me who was not excited for me. My dad was very excited for me. My dad was all over it. He was an entrepreneur. My mom was the person who was worried for me and concerned for me and didn't think it was a good idea. When I walked away from my teaching position, she thought I lost my mind, all my security, all of the things that she felt and she wanted for me to have. Um, and since at that point in time, Brian was in college full time, um, and Jennifer, our four-year-old daughter, um, was all depending on my income at that point. She just thought that was the craziest thing and she was very fearful of that scenario. So when I earned my very first big Cadillac, I picked her up in the Cadillac for lunch. And um, at that point, my father had passed away at age of 56. And my mom was living with my mother, with her mother, my grandmother. And my dad was an alcoholic, except I always have to add the disclaimer that my dad was a happy alcoholic. <laughs> and I know that alcoholism is a very detrimental thing in our lives. Um, but when you live, live with a happy alcoholic, um, then what happens is your life is full of a lot of sing-song, a lot of joy, a lot of fun. Um, but there's a lot of destruction that's going on in the background. The destruction is that he had a very, very successful business and he lost it. My mother had helped him create the business and she had no control over losing it. So not only did they go bankrupt and they lost their beautiful home and their beautiful cars, that he ended up passing away and then she had nothing. So I went from an upper middle class family to not. And um, my mom moved in with my grandmother. So, so when I heard my Cadillac, when she got in my Cadillac, and we drove around, she said to me, new car smell, new car smell wonderful ever smell new car smell for myself again. She was proud of me, she was excited, she was coming around a little bit in this Mary Kay thing. Um, those are the things that I remember that she said to me that impacted me. So when Brian and I um, built our home in Lincoln, Nebraska as a national sales director, um, Brian came to me and said one day, I think we need to have your mom move in with us because um, she can turn a couple rooms in the house together to make a suite for her, and I believe that she needs to be here. My grandmother had passed away at that point in time, so we did that, and she moved in with us. She moved in with us, and we were able to go to a shopping um, center in Kansas City and buy her beautiful sofa, gorgeous artwork, and beautiful bedding, and all the things that she loved, and she loves ambiance, and, and decorate those two rooms for her. And she loved it, and she was thrilled. We purchased a new car for her, and that's a story in itself. But the sofa is important because the sofa is where she sat with Mackenzie and where she, she sat with Whitney. For um, Whitney moving from junior high to high school, and Mackenzie moving from grade school to junior high, countless stories, countless countless conversations, countless for listening to them and asking them questions and providing comfort and being such a great grandmother and it, like an added parent in our home um, for Brian and I. And she cooked for us and that was very important. <laughs> for a woman who doesn't cook, remember I rap, I don't cook. Um, and Brian cooks, but 
but they can only live off macaroni and cheese and, and rice and corn and hot dogs for so long. Um, we were very excited that my mom is moving in for lots of reasons. Um, and so that was a tremendous blessing in my life. And then when we moved to Oklahoma City, um, she didn't want to move to Oklahoma City. We ended up moving her to Indianapolis. And we purchased a condo for her so she could be close to my sister in Indianapolis. Okay, so I'm telling you these things because um, all her furniture went with her to Indianapolis and we got her condo and she was very thrilled and excited about it and then added other things to it and she had a wonderful life being able to be with my sister. Well, a few years ago, um, we realized that she was having some issues, some very severe issues with her dementia and, and um, she does have Alzheimer's. So we moved her into an assisted living um, and we moved all her beautiful things into the assisted living. Now, I always say that sometimes the people, the people who have not supported you in your business or don't understand, the ones that you want to support you and understand, um, are sometimes the ones who benefit the most from the fact that you didn't lose sight of your dream. Because God has a way of always providing restoration. So, when Eli was born, we took a trip to Indianapolis. Wendy and I and took Eli so that she could meet Eli and have time with him. And we got great pictures of all our generations. And I have a magnificent sister who's just incredible. She does all the work with my mom at that end. And then we are able to pay for everything because of Mary Kay. We purchased her condo. We now pay for her beautiful facility that she's in because of Mary Kay. Um, and so. When um, Jensen was born, um, Jensen is my mom's maiden name, or my mom's name, my maiden name. Um, so Mackenzie named baby Jensen, and she wanted to take baby Jensen to meet his great grandmother. And I prepared Mackenzie, because Mackenzie hadn't seen my mom for quite a while, and she knew that she might not remember her. And she knew that, um, that she was in a facility right now for memory care. And so we arrived at the door um, and we knocked on the door and it's my sister and Mackenzie and baby Jensen. And my mom opened the door and she said hi to my sister and she's smiling and she said, it's a baby. We said, yeah, we have a baby. She didn't know me and she didn't know Mackenzie. Of course she didn't know the baby, but excited that a baby came to see her. So we walked into her room and Mackenzie sat on the sofa. And my mom sat next to her, held the baby, played the baby, we took pictures, we had stories, we had fun, we left. We came back the next day and we knocked on the door again. And this time when she opened the door, she looked at me and she said, walked in and we sat down and she's asking questions and she looked at the baby, she's so excited to see the baby. So Mackenzie sat down next to her one more time on the sofa. And I went over and I picked up a picture on my credenza of myself and Whitney and Mackenzie. And I said, Mom, this is a picture of me and my two daughters. So that's me, she said yes. And I said, and that's Whitney. And she said, yes, Whitney. And I said, and that's Mackenzie. And she said, oh, Mackenzie. And she looked at Mackenzie, the baby Jensen, and said, Mackenzie. And the tears came, and the joy happened, and it was there for probably five minutes, and then it was gone. <laughs> so we all left, and we got in the car. And as I got in the car, I went to Bogle and I turned to my sister and I said, I can't go yet. And she said, okay. And I said, I have to go back in. And of course, you got to leave me in the car. <laughs> I said, you think of all these practical things. Like, forget the practical things. Like, I'm 
go back in. So I went back in in the dorm, and she's sitting there playing games with all the other people in the, um, in the dining room. And I walked in, and I sat in front of her, and I said, I'm sorry to interrupt you guys, but I have to tell my mom that I love her one more time. And I stood in front of her, and I grabbed her hands, and I said, Mom, can never forget how much I love looked in her eyes like we teach ourselves to do with our children. And she said, hey everybody, this is my daughter Stacy. She is really important. <laughs> Thank you. 